What an awesome creature. And what an unlikely animal to ever even exist. He's the most charismatic, prehistoric animals yet known. Thanatos Smilus was from South America. And until about seven million years ago, South America was fully separated from the rest of the world and occupied by its own specific, unique groups of animals. The main carnivorous group were the Sporazodonts. All of them carnivorous descended from a small, live little carnivore, but they today have no living descendants. Among that group, there was a saber-toothed member. The whole construction of Fathom Smiles is stout, stocky, thick, and robust. This animal is not a sprinter. The few lumbar vertebrae and sacrum that were found are very stout. Back legs, hips, and tail were subjected to a lot of power, a lot of strength. The humerus is mobile with a lot of attachment for pectoral and deltoid muscles. The distal radius has a lot of surface area suggesting flexibility in the hands. The neck of Thalagosmilus was long and very powerful. Ridges, processes, well developed for pulling back action. The atlas and the axis hyper developed in a very particular fashion with large sideways wings and a lot of space to accommodate a large occipital condyle. Thalagos Smilus had a very peculiar skull. These iconic canines, which are triangular in cross section, root back of the skull. The canines were open rooted and therefore maybe ever growing. The enamel might have been coated with iron that those teeth were used for killing stabbing and for piercing. Thylacos Smilus did not rely on the jaw closing mechanism to deliver. It was a neck derived movement. The wear pattern on the teeth of Thylacos Smilus is odd for any meat shearing carnivore and are still very much up to debate as to how they obtained food. The jaw could open immensely wide. The lower jaw, large, sheath, scabbard, chin, against which the teeth would insert themselves. This big symphysis that was not coossified, yet very strongly connected, was likely permeated with sensory vibrissae to gauge its position relative to its prey before delivering I anticipate that the tongue was of a very particular shape. Long, thin, and tapered, tipped at the end with a certain rugose, cat-like papillae sharpness. The incisors and lower canines are fully reduced, and the premaxilla, though we can assume that it was small and maybe bore teeth, is missing altogether. The exact mechanism of how it consumed flesh is unknown. It might be that it was like the thylacine and had a predilection for livers and innards, leaving a large quantity of material for other carnivores to feast upon. The saber-toothed animals occupied a niche no longer existent today, a niche that I think was quite specific, and affected the land in a very particular manner, making the land much more hospitable for a bigger variety of fang-toothed folk. And so in South America, Thalagos Smilus lived in a very odd ecosystem, all of the members of the communities would have been unrecognizable and are today extinct. The Sinathrins, large sloths, forest rocket birds, land crocodiles, there were giant rodents, chunky, stout, hippo, rhino-like, noto, ungulates, and toxodonids, and other boar hyenid folk. A Smiles was unlikely to go after mature, large adults of their prey species. It was likely after the young, the sick, and the old. A close cover, it would rush and tackle its prey, delivering a powerful slashing bite that would kill the animal quickly. Under the shadow of much larger bird predators, and it likely had to feed quickly and obtain as much nutrition from its prey as possible. 
before being scuppered by much larger than itself. Arche Navis was contemporaneous with Thanatos Smilus, a very efficient walking, flying, eagle, heron. Thanatos Smilus may have been the saber tooth in that ecosystem, but I do not think that he was the king. It is likely that Thylacos Smilus had a prolonged childhood and a long maternal bond while it learned how to be a proper hunter. Tools. 